Imagine a day when time suddenly freezes and only you can move freely. In this frozen world, there are no rules, no laws, and the darker parts of human nature can run wild. Our main character, Yuri, and her family have this incredible power. Yuri just graduated from college but despite many interviews, she can't land a job. Only her grandpa offers her some comfort at home. Her brother and father are not much help. One is always drinking and the other is glued to video games. The only person who is actually working is her sister, who is a single mom to a kid named Makoto. Yuri naturally takes up the responsibility of picking Makoto up from kindergarten. One day, fed up with her gaming brother, she unplugs his screen and tells him to pick up Makoto. On their way back home, they get kidnapped. The kidnappers call Yuri's home and demand a ransom of 5 million yen, or else they threaten to kill Yuri's brother first, then Makoto. The family doesn't have that kind of money, and they're at a loss for what to do. Just when Yuri is ready to take a kitchen knife and go fight the kidnappers, Grandpa stops everyone. He pulls out a mysterious stone and asks his son and granddaughter to place their hands on it. He then cuts his palm with a knife and drops his blood on the stone. In an instant, a magical boundary extends out from the stone, and three specters enter the room through the window. Spectre is a life form that grants those with the ability to move in status. They let these specters enter their bodies, and time freezes. Everything stops, from flying butterflies and bees to moving cars, even a lollipop about to hit the ground. Grandpa walks with his son and granddaughter to the kidnapper's location, explaining about this frozen world along the way. He calls the still time state, stasis, and it's a magic passed down from his own grandfather. Only their family knows about it, and only the three of them can move in it. Grandpa warns them that others have been to stasis before. For those people, the freedom was too much. They could easily steal from others and do terrible things. Their greed grew until they were swallowed by the world. So he warns his family to only rescue the kidnapped, and do nothing else. When they reach the kidnappers, they find their kidnapped family members, but are attacked by other people who can also move in stasis. Yuri's father gets knocked out. The attackers then try to kill Yuri, but Grandpa teleports her away just in time. His teleportation distance is short, so they can't get very far. It turns out that each member of Yuri's family can awaken a special ability in stasis, and Grandpa's is teleportation. Suddenly, a man bursts out from the building. He grabs Makoto and threatens Yuri and her grandpa. Behind the man, a giant monster slowly appears. Its massive hand hovers over the man's head, but the man is clueless. He still holds a knife to Makoto. The monster grabs the man's head and crushes it, then slowly vanishes. Grandpa quickly teleports Yuri away. It turns out there are rules in this stopped world, also known as stasis. People who are frozen are protected. If anyone tries to harm them, a creature known as the Handler appears to protect the frozen individuals. Grandpa assures Yuri that her brother and Makoto will be safe because they are in a frozen state and will be protected by the Handler. The main focus now is to rescue Yuri's dad, who isn't frozen in time. Grandpa instructs Yuri to go home first to retrieve the magic stone that allows them to enter stasis. They can break the current time stop and enter a different stasis at a different time to avoid the mysterious group. Even a shift of a millisecond can make a completely new stasis. No one notices that a specter flies out of the body of the dead bad guy and enters Yuri's brother. This changes him from a frozen person to a non-frozen person. Her brother sees Makoto, who is unconscious. He quickly picks up Makoto and wants to go to the hospital. At the same time, Grandpa sneaks into the enemy base called Genuine Love Society. He finds a secondary stone that looks like theirs. A picture on a computer screen shows the three of them performing their magic. Grandpa understands their family stone is the target, and Yuri is in danger. Yuri just gets home and is attacked while searching for the stone. She pushes her attacker away but can't find the stone anywhere in the house. A group of men bursts in. One grabs Yuri by the neck and she begins to lose consciousness. Suddenly Yuri's eyes turn pure white. She awakens her special power. She can clearly see the specter inside the man attacking her. With a simple push, the man starts bleeding from his nose and the specter inside him bolts out in fear. The man becomes frozen because he no longer has the specter. The leader of the mysterious group, Shoko, explains that they can enter stasis because their bodies are fused with the specter. Once the specter is removed, they are kicked out of stasis. After some struggle, Yuri successfully escapes with the magic stone. In a brief moment of eye contact with Shoko, Yuri vaguely feels like she has met her when she was a child. The leader of Genuine Love Society named Junji is walking around in stasis with his followers. A few months ago, Shoko told Junji about stasis. 
sparking his curiosity to enter the realm. Shoko informs Junji that Yuri's family has the main stone while Genuine Love Society has a secondary stone, which only works when the main stone is activated. So, Junji sends his men to plan a kidnapping. Junji has a theory about the handler. To test this theory, he orders a follower to execute a frozen person. The handler appears and kills the person in the same way. After the kill, the handler slowly fades away. This handler is smaller than the last one, indicating that killing consumes its energy. Suddenly, a specter emerges from the body of the dead follower. The specter seems to have a sense of direction and shoots across the city into Makoto. Now, Makoto gains the ability to move in stasis, meaning all of Yuri's family can now move freely. Makoto adapts quickly and starts running in the streets, playing hide and seek with Yuri's brother. Yuri's brother is worn out from all this running and even hurts his back while trying to pick up Makoto. At the same time, Junji's minions start to run amok in stasis. While causing chaos in a supermarket, they spot Yuri passing by and plan to capture her. Yuri encounters her returning grandfather on the road. Her grandfather has to repeatedly use his teleportation skill to shake off the pursuers. The two discuss how to rescue Yuri's father. When they pass by a strong man, he suddenly draws a knife to attack Yuri. Luckily, her grandfather reacts quickly and teleports away with the strong man, distancing him from Yuri. Furious, the man tries to stab the grandfather, but Yuri intervenes and ejects the specter from the man's body, freezing him. Yuri asks her grandfather if they'd been to this frozen world before. Her grandfather reveals that they have been there when she was a child to spend more time with her dying dog. However, Yuri was so sad and almost ejected her grandfather's specter at that time, which led him to decide not to teach her the spells, fearing she might misuse them. Their pursuers catch up again. Yuri and her grandfather run to a nearby train track. Her grandfather is too old to run anymore. Fed up with the day's events, Yuri throws the stone at their pursuers in a fit of rage. She ejects their specters, freezing them. Her grandfather is amazed at her ability. They decide to fight back. With one able to teleport, and the other able to eject specters, they work together to freeze their enemies. They even buy some water and bread from a supermarket to replenish their energy. Her grandfather informs Yuri that their enemy is a mysterious cult called Genuine Love Society that has been targeting their family for a long time. After hiding their stone in a tree, they decide to infiltrate the cult's base to rescue Yuri's father. A few cult followers around Shoko are arguing about leaving Stasis. Shoko coldly tells them that they can't leave without the special stone. This shocks the troublemakers and causes chaos. They start fighting among themselves. A guy in red even wants to kill someone who's frozen. The handler shows up and blows the guy in red's head off. The handler looks much smaller than the first time Shoko saw him. This time, after using his power, he doesn't vanish. He falls to the ground and turns into dust. Shoko steps forward and sweeps away the dust. A skinny, skeletal person bursts out from the pile. Except for the head, only bones remain. These handlers were once humans who gave control of their bodies to specters because of the corrupting power of stasis. People ask Shoko how she knows so much. Shoko emotionlessly tells them she's seen her own family turn into handlers. Seventeen years ago, Shoko went with her family to claim an inheritance. They only got a special stone said to be valuable. Shoko's brother cries and tries to grab the stone. His tears fall into it. At the same time, Yuri's grandfather uses his power to comfort Yuri, who is sad about her dying dog. They go into stasis, and Shoko's family does too because of the secondary stone. This empty world takes away their hope. Thinking it's the afterlife, the dad loses his will to live and turns into a handler. The mom wants to protect her kids but she's mentally weak. She gets consumed next. Then it's the brother's turn. In the end, only Shoko is left. Shoko, walking in sorrow and without the will to live, was about to be consumed by a specter when Yuri intervened, ejecting the specter and freeing her from stasis. Over the years, Shoko never forgot her family. She told Junji about stasis and gave him the secondary stone. Although it appeared that she wanted to explore it, her actual plan was to use the Genuine Love Society to rescue her family. A cult follower named Seiko took pity on her and decided to help her find her family. Meanwhile, Yuri's dad is comfortably drinking afternoon tea in the cult base. Junji had talked to him and found out that he knows nothing about stasis. Realizing that Yuri's dad is morally weak and greedy, Junji treats him well, planning to use him to trap Yuri and her grandfather. After a lot of effort, Yuri and her grandfather manage to rescue Yuri's dad. Instead of being thankful, the dad blames the grandfather for not using the power of stasis to get rich. However, he has no say at home normally, so he has no choice but to leave with Yuri and her grandfather. 
On the other side, Yuri's brother takes Makoto back home. There's still a cult follower in the house. He hears them and quickly pretends to be frozen. Yuri's brother sees the mess in the house, thinking he's dreaming. Makoto goes to the kitchen to grab some pudding to eat. Finally, Yuri's brother spots the man and immediately confronts him, telling his nephew to run. Makoto quickly escapes through the window. Yuri's brother and the cult follower engage in intense hand-to-hand -hand combat. Yuri's brother manages to pin the man down. The man loosens his grip and the knife flies out of his hand. It hovers in the air shakily. He desperately reaches for the knife but Yuri's brother wraps a cloth around his head, effectively suffocating him. Yuri's brother wanders the streets feeling helpless. He is mentally exhausted by the end of the day. His thoughts consume him and tentacles start to emerge from his body, just like what's happening to Shoko's family. He is being consumed by this world. Luckily, Yuri comes just in time. She drives the specter away and gets her brother out of stasis. Shoko shows up and takes Makoto's clothes, indicating she has Makoto now and is using this to negotiate with Yuri. Shoko tells Yuri about his family issues. She knows that inside the handler is actually a person, so she believes her family has become handlers. Shoko wants to lure out the handler by killing someone in stasis, then have Yuri drive away the handler's specter so she can find her family. Yuri agrees to help. Yuri doesn't understand why Shoko can't just ask for help. Shoko explains she didn't think Yuri's happy family would risk entering stasis to look for people who had turned into monsters. That's why Shoko takes extreme measures by kidnapping to force Yuri's hand. Shoko tries to kill someone in stasis to lure out the handler but can't muster the will to do it, no matter how many times she tries. Yuri's impatient dad steps up and puts his hand on the man's neck, asking grandpa how much murderous intent is safe. This gives them an idea of what to expect next time they enter the stasis realm. Yuri impatiently complains, doubting that the handler can be summoned so easily. But in the next second, his intense killing intent attracts three handlers. Using her ability, Yuri drives away the specters from all three handlers. Inside these monsters are Shoko's parents and brother. They've been so eroded by time and stasis that they are unrecognizable, but her brother still shows signs of life and could recover if he leaves stasis. Shoko sees that Yuri has helped her find her family and returns Makoto to her. Yuri hugs Makoto tightly, realizing the pain of losing parents like Shoko. Yuri decides to seal stasis to prevent such tragedies from happening again. After settling Shoko's family, their next goal is to drive all the cult members out of stasis. Once they return to the real world, they'll destroy the stones so stasis can't exist anymore. Shoko decides to join them in this plan. A cult follower notices that the water in the cult's inner courtyard seems disturbed. Being a smart guy, he figures someone must have cleaned their hands there after hiding something in a tree. He climbs the tree and sure enough, finds the hidden sacred stone. Excited, he rushes to report his find to Junji, the cult leader. At the same time, Junji is studying the handler with his most trusted subordinate named Shiomi. Junji lures his followers into believing he can change the world through the stasis technique. The fooled followers wholeheartedly believe this, but now, Junji reveals to Shiomi that his real aim is to use the handler and stasis to achieve eternal life and observe the world forever. However, this means he can't manage the religious group anymore and needs a trustworthy person to take over. Shiomi is his chosen successor. The cult follower with the stone overhears them and loses faith in Junji, thinking that the cult leader is only interested in the stone and not in growing the genuine love society. He refuses to hand over the stone, but Junji is prepared. He first allows Spectre to invade his own body, and then uses his powerful mind to counter-control Spectre. In this way, he transforms into the handler with a clear mind and retains self-awareness. He then swiftly kills the cult follower and any other cult members who betrayed him. Then he leaves with the stone. No one notices that the cult follower, being sturdy, doesn't die immediately. In a hazy state of consciousness, he also becomes the handler. Now transformed into the handler, Junji needs to eat constantly to maintain his energy. He spots Yuri's brother and decides to use him as leverage against Yuri's family. He carries the brother to a mall, where he and Shiomi eat heartily. When Yuri finds out her brother is taken, she splits her team into three groups. Her dad looks after Makoto, Shoko pretends to go back to Junji's side to rescue the brother, and Yuri and her granddad aim to protect Shoko secretly. Junji senses Shoko's betrayal and attempts to kill her. Just in time, Yuri and her granddad arrive using teleportation powers to save Shoko. But it turns out, this is all part of Junji's plan. He wanted to draw out Yuri's powerful granddad. Hidden Shiomi seizes this chance to cut the granddad and collect his blood. Shiomi and Junji then leave the scene. 
Junji drips the granddad's blood onto the stone, reactivating it. It turns out the person that the blood belongs to will be expelled from stasis. Junji plans to first eject the granddad, whose teleportation power is too strong. Without the granddad's support, Yuri and her family would be easy prey. The specter begin to flow out of the granddad's body. Yuri asks her granddad to teleport her to the stone. She smashes it, causing the specter to return to her granddad. However, now no one can leave stasis through the stone since it's destroyed. They can only leave by Yuri dispelling their body's specters, but Yuri herself can never leave stasis. Junji and Shiomi arrive to see the shattered stone. Shiomi switches sides, realizing only Yuri can help him leave stasis now. He reveals Junji's weakness, as the handler, he needs to eat constantly. If he doesn't, the specter will go out of control and consume him. He tells them Junji has a big dream. He wants to see history and what happens in the future. He wants to break free from the regular flow of time that keeps everyone else moving from today into tomorrow. Therefore, he wants to be the handler in stasis. When he comes back to the regular world, he'll be in the future that he's always been curious about. Yuri's dad and Makoto encounter a handler who was the cult follower killed by Junji. Yuri's dad tries to protect Makoto but ends up getting grabbed by the handler. In a desperate moment, Makoto shouts, stop, let him go. Surprisingly, the handler obeys Makoto's command. Yuri's dad realizes Makoto has a special ability to control the handler. When others arrive and are confused about what's happening, Yuri's dad dishonestly leads them to believe he is the one controlling the handler. Makoto, clueless about his intentions, unwittingly helps him keep up the lie. Now, with the handler as their main force, they have a better chance of defeating Junji. They launch an attack on Junji. Makoto uses his control over the handler to fight Junji. Shoko's man named Seiko focuses on distracting Junji, while Yuri and her grandpa look for a chance to drive the specter out of Junji's body. The teamwork gives Yuri's side a distinct advantage. Everyone also realizes that the real controller is Makoto. Makoto commands the handler to strangle Junji, who tries to break free by using all his energy and becomes weakened. To quickly regain energy, Junji even starts eating the handler and then escapes. Yuri, backed up by her grandpa, prepares to deliver a fatal blow to Junji. Junji offers a truce, promising to teach Yuri how to use the specter to enter and exit stasis. Yuri doesn't budge, making Junji feel powerless and realize he's just an ordinary person. Junji's family has long been in charge of the Genuine Love Society. Junji grew up following his dad, who preached to followers. Junji once admired his dad's morals but found out they were a sham, leading to a collapse of his own beliefs. After his father's death, he takes over as the cult leader. One day, he discovers the connection between the stones and stasis, giving his life new meaning. Yuri's grandpa pleads with her to agree to Junji's offer, as he doesn't want her to be stuck in stasis forever. Yuri remains unyielding, knowing that sparing Junji risks her family's safety. Unable to change Yuri's mind, her grandpa prepares to kill Junji himself but hesitates. At this moment, Yuri's dad bursts in and stabs Junji repeatedly. Junji's will to live is incredibly strong. He escapes as just a head and organs, and his surroundings quickly sprout numerous threads. Yuri's dad tries to cut them but ends up severing his own fingers. To stop her dad's bleeding, Yuri picks up his severed fingers and puts them in his pocket. She then drives out his specter, removing him from stasis. Later, the threads form a cocoon as Junji tries to regenerate. During this calm period, Yuri feels sad for not saying goodbye to her dad. She contemplates her lonely future stuck in stasis. Her grandpa assures her he won't leave her alone and they bid farewell to Makoto, sending him back home. Shiomi finds out that the threads are specter byproducts, and Yuri can drive them away. After some effort, Yuri faces Junji and dispels him. In that moment, she sees glimpses of his tragic past. Junji is reborn as a baby due to his strong will. Yuri decides to raise baby Junji herself. She says goodbye to Shoko, Shiomi, and Seiko, driving the specters out of them and sending them back to the real world. She stays in stasis with her grandpa to learn how to care for a child. Yuri doesn't want her grandfather to be stuck with her in stasis, so she sends him back while he's asleep. She spends each day talking to the baby because there's no other living beings around. Eventually, she can't bring herself to send the baby away either. She's the only person in stasis now. Day after day goes by, and she's incredibly bored. When boredom sets in, she starts to do whatever she wants, because this is her world. To keep her sanity and not go crazy, she writes in a diary every day. But after a while, even this habit fades away. She keeps reminding herself not to think dark thoughts. But the more awake she is, 
the more she can help it. Suddenly, she sees a blue dragon floating in the sky. She worries that she's losing her mind, but then she thinks, what does it even matter if she stays sane anymore? Nothing makes sense now. Just when her thoughts start to consume her entirely, she wakes up, and there's a woman in front of her. The woman introduces herself as the wife of the man who created this stone that trapped them in this dimension. She was born with a special ability that keeps her from aging. She used to visit Stasis with her husband often, but he got lost in his research, aged, and eventually died. After hearing Yuri's story, she decides her husband's stone is to blame and takes Yuri out of Stasis. Now Yuri has no money on her and has to walk home. When she opens the door, her grandfather is sitting there waiting for her. Even though she spent what felt like years in stasis, it was only a second in the real world. This second felt incredibly long to Yuri, but luckily, she's finally back with her family. The story centers around a pretty normal family but with a twist. They can move at a frozen world by bonding with jellyfish-like creatures called specters. But the story doesn't dive super deep into how all this works, neither from the perspective of Yuri's family nor from the villains. Why do they have these unique abilities? It's all a big mystery. Still, the story feels full and complete because it paints a detailed picture of each character, and really efficiently too. Like Yuri's dad is a great example. He's kind of a failure but still wants to be the one calling the shots at home, yet you can tell he really wants to protect his family. And Yuri, she starts off confused and passive, getting pushed around and looking scared. But by the end, she's making firm decisions, protecting her family, and her will is rock solid. She knows what she wants to achieve and doesn't get sidetracked. Knowing she might not be able to go back, she smashes the stone without any hesitation. For her, nothing is more important than the safety of her family. So when the dust settles, only three people are left in stasis. She chooses to send her grandpa and the baby back to the real world. She leaves herself alone in this frozen world. Living like that is really depressing and desperate. In the end, with the help of the mysterious founder, she returns to her familiar home. Being waited for by your family is such a wonderful thing.